Welcome to another episode of InRange. I'm here to talk to you today about a new division that I've added to Brutality Matches called Deadeye. And I really believe that Deadeye is going to be the future of cowboy action shooting. But instead of talking about Deadeye directly, let's talk a little bit about the history of cowboy action shooting. And part of the reason I'm trying to bring Deadeye into the Brutality Matches. First and foremost, I love the history. And I absolutely love the firearms. Anyone that's watched in range for even a short duration of time probably has come to the understanding on how much I love lever action rifles and how much I love Old West history and the firearms related to it. And cowboy action shooting has been an outlet for many of us that have those same enjoyments to participate and use these firearms in a safe, creative, and fun way. Cowboy action shooting has been around since the 1980s. It is a splinter group that came off of a traditional three-gun group. So they were shooting the you know, modern guns, modern shotguns, modern rifles, modern pistols. And a small crew there, this is in Southern California, actually really loved Old West guns. And they said, well, what if we started shooting three-gun, but with Old West guns? And they did just that. And it became so popular that it splintered off and became a new sport called cowboy action shooting. And in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, cowboy action shooting was a very dynamic and really three-gun type sport. Reloading on the clock, shooting under barricades, uh, knockdown targets, all the things you would see at a three-gun match, but designed to be possible and applicable to Old West firearms and the capacity and things that they bring with them. But cowboy action shooting has, since the 1980s, really become formulaic. It has become a very specific thing, and it is something that we now refer to as 10, 10, and 4. Now, before this starts sounding like I'm being negative, and I'm not, I still really do love cowboy action shooting, and I was a competitive cowboy action shooter in Arizona for about a decade or so, I think, something like that, up to and including placing second place multiple years in a row in our state championships second place every time. But hey, is what it is. But from the 80s to the now 2020s, cowboy action shooting has changed a lot from what it started as into what it is now. And that's not to say that what it is now is bad or wrong. Please don't misunderstand that. But it is to say that it is definitely formulaic and has become a specific thing. And I think it is missing some stuff that it originally started with. So when I say 10, 10, and 4, let me explain what that means. That means 10 pistol, 10 rifle and four shotgun. And with almost no alteration, cowboy action shooting now is that. And you will go to the match and you'll shoot six stages and all of them will be 10, 10, and four. Now it might be 10, four, 10. Could be 10 rifle, four shotgun, and 10 pistol. Or it could be four, 10, 10, four shotgun, 10 rifle, 10 pistol, or something like that. But almost every stage is some iteration of 10, 10, 4. And in this regard, the targets have been brought so close, at least in most cowboy action shooting environments, your particular cowboy action club may be different, and I'm not trying to speak to all of them, but in general, cowboy action shooting, including state championships and even the nationals, um, the targets are very close, sometimes as close as three yards away. And honestly, you don't really need your sights. You don't need your sights on your pistol. You don't need your sights on your shotgun or your bead. And you don't need your sights on your rifle. It is really a function of how fast can you manipulate the firearm at very close range targets while transitioning from one firearm to another with really no dynamic movement reloading or any other weapon manipulation. So without further explanation, let me go ahead and show you a stage of 10-10-4. Okay, so there's that stage, and let me go ahead and show you another stage from the same day at the same match. And this is, again, 
this is a, another iteration of 10, 10, and 4. Now you'll see the targets are very close, and you have to shoot them in a different order. And one of the challenges is the pattern in which you have to engage them in and not mess up the pattern. But you'll see it is still 10, 10, and 4. So when you go to the match, you're going to shoot six of those stages in a day. So you, stage one will be 10, 10, 4, and stage six will be 10, 10, and 4. And in many times, you'll actually only have three separate bays, and you'll shoot the same targets twice for two different stages. So stage one and two will be on bay one, etc., etc. So you've done six, and it is very measurable. You know how much ammunition you need to bring. You always need to bring enough for 10, 10, and 4 times six, and you know what you're getting yourself into. But what that's turned into is, since it is so based on the speed of the manipulation of the firearm, it is ironic in that some of the most gamey type modifications to firearms that I've ever seen occur in the cowboy action shooting space. Short stroke kits for pistols, short stroke kits for lever actions, meaning you don't have to throw it as far. Now, this one does have a short stroke kit in it. I'll talk about that more on another day, really. And I'll show you that there's a problem with some of those modifications, which actually shows up in my match. Um, but all of those things turn into how, how lightly can you load the ammunition. There are no KD targets, meaning knockdown targets. There is technically a legal power minimum, but the power minimum is really never enforced, at least I've never seen it enforced. And anything that could prove it demonstrably on the clock, for example, a spinner target, a knockdown plate, uh, things like that where underpowered ammunition would be a problem, never really show up. It's always static plates, no knockdown targets. And so as a result, for people who are oriented towards winning versus, or at least score, more than they are oriented towards the firearms themselves or the history, with some crossover thereof, have very underloaded ammunition at very close targets with highly modified guns. And while that sounds like I'm being negative, I'm not saying that it should be. Everyone should have the sport that they want to be able to enjoy. But the reality is I think it is time for cowboy action shooting to see some new blood and a reinvigoration of what I think cowboy action shooting should be. So let me go ahead and show you one of the stages from recently ran CQB Brutality in St. George, Utah, the first time we've run the Dead Eye Division. And this is me shooting with my black powder setup. I shot twice. I shot Old Old West and New Old West. I'm gonna get more into that in another video, but here's one of my black powder runs. How many on that one still? One. One. Far right. Hit! Good! Good, left side, good job.
Still moving? Still, Still moving. moving. Over. Over. All right, so you can see that that is significantly different than the 10, 10, and 4 traditional, I'm going to put in air quotes, cowboy action shooting that you saw just a few moments ago. And one of the other things that's challenging about traditional cowboy action shooting is to be able to shoot the sport. You have to have a minimum of two pistols, one lever action rifle, and one shotgun. There's really no way to shoot traditional cowboy action shooting without all three of those types of guns, but really four guns and realistically you need backups in case something breaks and in that regard that is something i wanted to remove that barrier of entry for in deadeye and so in deadeye and i'm going to show you here by comparing two different runs of my own accord um, you can use not only any of the guns you've brought in any order that you see fit as long as what you're doing is allowed to be engaging the target you're engaging so what i mean is you can engage targets that are rated for pistol caliber with pistol calibers, and you can engage targets that are rated for shotgun with shotguns. And in some instances, you can shoot pistol targets with shotguns, and you can shoot shotgun targets with pistols. And so what that means is that you only really have to have one gun to be able to shoot Deadeye. But let me show you that here. So here's a back-to-back -back of one of my runs and another one of my runs, and you'll see that I shoot them differently based on the guns I'm using. Time! Clear it! Go! One more. You'll have to get it from here. You can't? Yeah, you got to get it from here. Where? You got a popper directly in front of you. Oh, how many are there? Four? Three. Three. So let me get more into that. If you think this sounds compelling and you like the idea of a more invigorating version of cowboy action shooting, which I certainly hope you do because I want to see Deadeye become the future of cowboy action shooting, the reality is you only need one firearm. You could come and shoot Deadeye at any of our matches, uh, well, any of our handgun-centric matches, handgun brutality is coming up early 2024, you could shoot that with one pistol. You could shoot with one lever action rifle. And so in that regard, you don't need to have a lever gun, two pistols, and a shotgun to shoot Deadeye, at least at our handgun-centric events. If you want to come to Handgun Brutality and shoot Deadeye, you just need one lever gun. And I guarantee you, you can complete and have fun shooting the entire event with that one lever gun, which lowers the cost of entry into the event. Now, all of you are going to ask if I was going to do that, what lever action should I get? And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that my understand, my belief is you should go ahead and get a 1873 Winchester reproduction, probably from one of the companies that's an importer, and Uberti is fine, Cimarron, all those people, Three. and get it in 357 slash 38 special. Now, before you say, wait a minute, that's not a round from the Old West. Well, actually, 38 special sort of is. One of the other things that we've done with Deadeye is made the division viable to any gun designed before 1898. We have no other rules than that. Iron sights only guns designed before 1898. As long as your ammunition is under 1600 feet per second for a pistol, 
you can use it in Deadeye. So you want to use a Marlin? Fine. You want to use an 1873 Winchester? Fine. You want to use 38 Special? Fine. You want to shoot 32 caliber rounds? That's fine as well, but you might have an issue knocking down some of the knockdown targets. It all applies and it's all about part of the game. But the reality is, the reason I recommend 38 357 Magnum 1873 Winchester is if you don't want to get into reloading or you need to buy ammunition in the field, 38 and 357 is easily viably accessible, reasonably cheap to buy off the shelf, and it would be legal to use at any of our Dead Eye events. That plus a full length 1873 will give you probably 13 rounds in the tube plus one in the chamber and you're starting off with 14 rounds and you can go back and forth between 38 and 357. I mean, maybe you get to a spinner target and you want a little extra energy. You could stoke that gun up with 357 rounds versus 38 rounds as long as you're under the minimum velocity, maximum velocity, and you could do that. And it would be the cheapest, most dynamic, easiest way to get into cowboy action shooting of any sort and we've made Deadeye the most accessible form of cowboy action shooting. So I know that question is going to be a big, big one. So there's the answer to you. I recommend a 38 Special 357 Magnum 1873 Winchester Italian reproduction. Or you could get one from Winchester proper, which are made in Japan by Moroku. And you're going to have no problem getting the ammunition. And you'll have a good time at the lowest cost possible. If you want to join us for Handgun Brutality coming up in 2024, you can look at brutalitymatches.org. That's the gun I would recommend you acquire. All the other ones like Marlins and stuff are more complicated, have more issues, and sometimes the malfunctions are hard to clear. Big fan of the Winchester style design. At any rate, going off top of here, um, the reality is this was the most fun I personally have ever had at any of our in-range brutality events. Not because the stage designs were the best, although they were good, um, but the reality was my love for these Old West guns and the Old West history and to be able to reinvigorate cowboy action shooting in a way that I believe is a much more dynamic, realistic approach to that kind of shooting, one that really invokes not only, gosh, like watching an Old Western movie, but actually using these guns the way they were intended to use if one were to find themselves in a fight in the Old West in a way that is uh, fun, inclusive and exciting and so you'll see another thing i should mention is that as long as it's before 1898 you can use it in dead eye this means you can use black powder you don't have to use black powder in fact there's no requirement to use black powder um, i used that because i wanted to for one of my runs you can also use smokeless powder which by the way did exist well before 1898 and was possible to obtain uh right in the mid 1890s if you had enough scratch talk about that more in my video about my more modern new old west run but that's not this today but what i wanted to talk to you about was that this dead eye division is going to be the future of cowboy action shooting and i'm hope that you're gonna join us there we have other events coming up in 2024 we have woodland brutality which is in west virginia and we have high desert brutality which is going to be up in parma idaho and we have something else probably running at the end of the year so handgun brutality will have dead eye which is anything before 1898 as I said, you could come with one lever action rifle and you'd be good to go. But at Woodland and at High Desert, we're adding another modified version of Dead Eye called the Roaring Twenties. And I have no video for you yet because we're doing that for the first time at Woodland Brutality. But that's any guns or firearms designed before December 31st, 1929. And of course, that invokes all sorts of things. The gangster period, the true, actually, the old, the newest of the Old West. When you think of Dillinger and all that, that really was kind of the Old West, just in a more modern era. It also includes perhaps um, Blair Mountain, especially out in West Virginia. So good opportunities there. So a bunch of World War I rifles suddenly become viable. And the reason we added the Roaring Twenties is at Woodland and High Desert, we have a much larger focus on rifle distance targets. We're talking 300 or even further yards. And you can do that in Deadeye. You want to bring out a Trapdoor Springfield in 4570, have at it. Or if you want to go into the Roaring Twenties, you could bring out a bolt action, you know, Enfield from World War I or a Springfield and a 1911 and, uh, gosh, a, a Thompson. And you could shoot in the Roaring Twenties. You know, costumes not required. Interestingly, traditional cowboy action shooting now sort of sometimes actually requires, actually does require a costume. No costume required. If you want to come out in modern clothes but shoot old guns, have at it. If you want to come out and in, uh, shoot modern guns in Old West clothes, have at it. If you want to come out and shoot Old West guns in Old West clothes, have at it. That's all about it. It's about the fun and getting more proficient 
with firearms and appreciating and enjoying the history in the process. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and this introduction to Deadeye, which I strongly believe is going to be the future of cowboy action shooting. I don't think it should replace traditional cowboy action shooting, but I do think we need another form of cowboy action shooting on the market. And I hope to see you at any one of our events in Deadeye or the Roaring Twenties. I want to remind you, of course, that InRange is supported by viewers like you, patreon.com slash InRange TV. If you can do it, please do. If you are, and by the way, Two Gun Action Army supporters get early access to matches at discount. All Patreon supporters get early access to matches at some discount before we bring the matches to the public at no discount. Well, at the full price. So if you're a Patreon supporter, when we go live with the ability to enroll in these matches, you get early access, and in many instances, you get a discount as well. So that might be one of the perks that would encourage you to be a supporter of InRange TV. But if you can't totally understand it, you can also watch for these matches at brutalitymatches.org. And when they go public, if there's still seats available, we hope we'll see you there, regardless of if you're a supporter or not. And hopefully we'll see you there in one of the divisions, Armored, Partisan, Deadeye, Roaring Twenties, whichever one suits you. But hopefully you see this and are excited about the potential of the future of cowboy action shooting. You'll consider, perhaps, my recommendation about the 357 slash 38 Special in a 1873 Winchester, if you're interested in doing as such. And I think you'll find yourself oddly addicted to these Old West guns, because, frankly, I have no more fun than I ever have shooting when I'm shooting this stuff. And I think you can see that in the video here, and hopefully my enthusiasm about bringing this to you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for a couple more episodes from CQ Brutality. I'm going to talk to you more about the old, old West runs that I did and the new old West runs that I did and why I chose the guns that you see on the table for both of those. See you soon.